Thanks for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm Heather Sells. The governor of Puerto Rico says it could be months before power is restored in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. The storm devastated the Caribbean island as residents there are slowly starting the cleanup. Meanwhile, in Mexico, the frantic search for survivors continues after a powerful earthquake struck the central part of that country earlier this week. Aid groups are scrambling now to get essential supplies to devastated areas. George Thomas has the latest. First responders are out on the streets of San Juan, Puerto Rico, after the strongest storm in 83 years slammed into the Caribbean island. Maria destroyed hundreds of homes, snapped trees, tore off roofs, and dumped at least 20 inches of rain. The governor says his island is completely destroyed. Residents of the U.S. territory joined firefighters as they fanned out across the capital, clearing wood and debris from the streets. This is my apartment. First time I came, I come inside. This is very sad. As people took stock of the damage, officials are warning it could be months before power is restored on the island. With hotels, ballrooms, shelters and sports arenas quickly filling up with the homeless, some are singing about finding strength through the storm. They'll need it as the recovery and cleanup slowly gets underway. The hurricane came ashore off Puerto Rico's northwest coast Wednesday, packing winds of 155 miles per hour, just two miles an hour under a Category 5. The storm regained strength as it moved back over open water, on course to slam into Turks and Caicos and the Dominican Republic. Folks in the storm's path made their preparations. Came here to the gas station, fill up my tanks. After here, I'm going to the food store, stock up on some food, and I'll be good from there. 2,300 miles west of Puerto Rico. This is the scene in Mexico City. As emergency crews are still working tirelessly, there are still people in there. There are still people groaning to find survivors following that 7.1 magnitude earthquake that struck the central part of the country. Over 40 buildings collapsed in the capital city. Operation Blessing, which has a significant presence in the country, responded soon after the earthquake struck Tuesday afternoon. Deploying folks on motorcycles to distribute water and other essential supplies to some of the hardest hit areas in the city. Within a few hours, oh, no, I was no. hundreds got busy helping set up mobile kitchens and filling warehouses as they stepped up to meet the needs of their hurting neighbors. Local authorities also joined a human chain of Operation Blessing volunteers as they packed vital supplies bound for some of the outlying areas near the quake's epicenter. 245 people have died so far, with Mexico City bearing the brunt of the deaths and damage. More than 2,000 were also injured, and so the need for help is great. Georgetown, CBN News. Hospitals in Mexico City are filled with the wounded and their families. CBN relief workers are on hand, bringing not only supplies, but spiritual comfort as well. CBN Mexico producer Esteban Castro shows us. CBN humanitarian and disaster relief brought food to the hospital for people waiting to hear news about their loved ones. Many people were injured in the earthquake and some are still missing. Avimelech asked one of our volunteers to pray for his brother, who was still in intensive care. And the greatest need that Mexico might have right now, more than tools, volunteers and food, is prayer. In this country, unprecedented natural disasters have left many churches damaged and in desperate need of repair. But current laws exclude houses of worship from federal disaster relief from FEMA. Four senators, including James Langford, introduced a bill to change this law so churches can be included in the nonprofits receiving federal aid. 
churches have been denied FEMA aid, uh, which makes it very, very ironic. In my state, uh, you may have a tornado that comes through the middle of a town that destroys several homes, damages a church. That church damage, though it may be, ends up being the shelter for quite a few folks or the food distribution network. But at the end of it, they have no access to the FEMA disaster funds. Everything else around them does. That doesn't make sense. Uh, the federal government cannot discriminate on someone simply based on the fact that they're a church. Since this is an urgent need, Senator Langford hopes that the Senate will take up this bill quickly. Well, Republicans are fighting the clock in their latest campaign to replace Obamacare. The new plan would end Obamacare rules that most people buy health care coverage and that large employers offer it. It would also cut Medicaid and let insurers charge more to the very ill. However, Republicans must get a vote by September 30th or they will need 60 votes to pass it. One very public opponent of the bill right now, television personality Jimmy Kimmel, he accused the bill's sponsors this week of lying about whether it protects people with pre-existing conditions. Both the bill's sponsors say it will. North Korea is responding to President Donald Trump's debut speech at the United Nations General Assembly on Tuesday. In his speech, the president said the U.S. would be forced to, quote, totally destroy North Korea if attacked. But North Korea's foreign minister told reporters in New York that threat is not going to stop them. If they thought they could scare us with the sound of a barking dog, that is a silly dream. I pity his advisors. Experts say North Korea is getting closer to building a nuclear armed missile capable of hitting the U.S. The North conducted its sixth nuclear test earlier this month. Coming up, a former felon is charged with a 500-year prison sentence. Find out what happens when he gets out and meets the judge who put him away. The White House is pointing to crime-fighting methods in Texas as, as an example for the nation to follow. The Lone Star State's crime rate is falling, and it's actually putting fewer people behind bars by moving from a lock -em up mentality to one of rehabilitation. John Jessup shows us one extraordinary example of how it's changing lives for people on both sides of the system. All right. As a former police officer, prosecutor, and judge, Robert Newsom would appear to typify Texas law and order. When he judges cases, however, Newsom follows two other principles, justice and compassion. So my judicial philosophy is, yes, I believe in the law, I promote the law, I'll stand with the law. But on the other hand, there's a place for mercy built into our law. Sulphur Springs boasts this picture-perfect town square, but like most stories, life has many twists and turns. One such turn began 20 years ago when Judge Newsom met a young man in his courthouse who was on the wrong side of the law. Well, this is the courtroom where I was sentenced to five 99-year sentences. Ron Atkins fell into a life of crime at 14. After a string of burglaries, a jury hammered him with almost 500 years in prison. At 22 and with no hope of ever leaving lockdown, Ron lashed out. So I set about making a reputation for myself, making a life for myself in the prison. And I became really violent. He joined a prison gang, fought inmates and staff, and racked up 250 prison violations. That put him in solitary, where he would eventually spend 13 years. Alone and suicidal, he says he turned to God and a worn out Bible. Half the pages were missing because I've been using it for rolling papers. I've been smoking cigarettes with Bible paper. All that was left of the Bible was the New Testament. Ron learned about grace, forgiveness, and God's love. So he left the gang for a Bible study. In 2012, Ron experienced his first miracle, a surprise review that resulted in parole more than 80 years before his projected release in 2095. I didn't even think it was real until I actually got out of the gate. <laughs> Once out of prison, he found work and also began sharing his story at churches and conferences. Father God, Lord, I love you and I thank you. That's how he met his wife, also a former felon, and now an ordained minister and a licensed Christian counselor. Then, one day while sitting in church, he ran into someone from his past. It dawned on me. I told the pastor, I said, you know what? I think that's the judge who sentenced me 
the 599 year sentence? And he's like, no, I don't think so. Afterwards, I went up to Ron. Came up to me and he was like, and I said, uh, are we okay? You know, I just felt my heart go out to him, you know. And he, he grabbed me and hugged me, you know, real big. It was, it was good. Burying their past, the judge and the man he put away forged a future based on faith. I never did go to prison. I never did uh, do some of the things that Ron has done, but I'm a sinner saved by grace, just like Ron is. We're brothers, we're brothers. This new relationship includes getting together each week at Judge Newsom's home. Come on in, everybody. Where neighbors, family, and other former convicts spend time together singing and praying. go in the judge's living room and have them treat me just like one of the family, you know? It was just really awesome. And guys just develop a relationship where, he, I mean, him and his wife, they're like mama and papa to me, you know? And the ripple effect of this unlikely story expands much further into the community. Not long after Ron stepped out of prison, he returned to the place where he was once jailed to share a message of freedom to men searching for hope and purpose. Don't ever discount anything with God, because once he's in your life, he's working through every detail, man. In the room next door, his wife Dawn shares her story with the women in jail. Ron's relationship with Judge Newsom opened the door for him to reach others who identify with his story. They cling to his every word, eager to experience the spiritual freedom he proclaims. Let's give it all to God and let's get set free. Let's get some forgiveness in your heart. You know what's in their lives, Lord. I just pray you reveal it to them, God. While critics question the merits of faith-based prison programs, Sheriff Tatum tells CBN News this one makes a difference. Through Ron and Don's ministry, inmates and even some staff have been baptized. According to Judge Newsom, it sparked a mini revival in the county. Ron believes this new chapter is evidence of God rewriting his past to create a lasting legacy. In the very place where I was sentenced to die in prison, he was going to use us to bring dead things back to life. And that's what he's doing. In the jail, in the worship nights, in the prayer meetings, he's just bringing dead things to life. John Jessup, CBN News, in Sulphur Springs, Texas. John Jessup also has a story on Ron Atkins' wife, Dawn. It's an exclusive on her journey from the jailhouse to ministry. You can find that by visiting CBNNews.com. Up next, we go behind the scenes of the new film, A Question of Faith. And welcome back to CBN News Watch. Right now, we turn to what is new at the box office, Kim Fields, T.C. Stallings, Jackie Velasquez, and Gregory Allen Williams are just a few of the familiar names appearing in the new film, A Question of Faith. From Graham brings us a Studio 5. Have your first look at the film. What happens when a member loses someone and they need God's word to bring them comfort? Who's going to give it to them? You? You have one family who's in desperate need of an organ transplant. You have another family who's going to deal with a serious tragedy. You have another family who is the catalyst of the tragedies. So what happens when you have three families completely broken who don't know each other? They fall. And in this film, we try to show you how to build you right back up, even in the worst times that God got you. And the reason why we say families discover God's grace, love, and mercy, they each have to go through a journey to understand why these, these events happen. Last one. Here we go. If you believe on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, call him up and tell him what you want. Can't stop praying his name. I just can't stop praying his name. I just can't stop praying his name, Jesus. Well, the movie stars Richard T. Jones. Kim Fields, C.C. Thomas Howell, who plays a man who does have some race issues. Renee O'Connor plays his wife. We have Jackie Velasquez, the Latino singer. We have T.C. Stallings from War Room, and we have Greg Allen Williams, who's currently on Greenleaf. My character is uh, is a pastor turning over uh, his church to his son, and tragedy strikes, and my character becomes 
the spiritual center for that family. In playing these spiritual leaders for you, I mean, is, is, is that something easy for you to tap into? Is it something you grew up with? What is it? It's easy because I, I, I honor it. Um, I remember those ministers. Bishop Tindrew and Bishop Goodman and, 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 and those folks and, and, and Pastor Crawford. And all of the answers to our good fortunes and our suffering can be found right there in his world. Well, when I read the script, I thought it was just such a dynamic story. And um, the fact that it was um, faith friendly, but not, you know, just hitting you over the head with it and not being shy or soft about very strong um, issues and topics, you know, and um, things that just because you're a person of faith doesn't mean that you don't go through a lot of difficult moments in life. Eric has suffered a traumatic brain injury. I'm remanding you to the juvenile detention center. I promise that I will do everything I can to save us. The only thing me and Teresa have been doing is trusting in the Lord and look where it's gotten us. I don't want your promises. I want a second opinion, and that's exactly what I intend on getting. When I read the script, I, I, I thought it was just a phenomenal script uh, and, and sets of storylines. And then, selfishly speaking, um, to be able to um, create, uh, uh, you know, breathe life into a character like Teresa, where she's got um, a lot of, you know, dramatic. Um, um, moments and, and really challenging issues. I think this film is definitely needed um, from the standpoint of you know some of its predecessors like War Room and uh, even you know years ago uh, Fireproof. Um, we're, we're clearly seeing that um, people of faith or people that you know tap into their spirit, their spirituality, um, that they want inspiration and they want relatable characters in very real situations and circumstances. And a question of faith is in American theaters next week, beginning September 28th. A former church in Washington, D.C. has been transformed into a work of art, literally. CBN's Ben Kennedy takes us inside the Technicolor Church in the nation's capital. It's one building that's hard to miss. You can see it from, you know, 395 from the highway. I mean, that highway uh, sees 175,000 cars a day. Odds are that drive-by audience will lead to a new attention for this former church's new life as a true work of art, a hidden gem in the heart of Washington, D.C. The ability to revive that and still keep the same themes of a church, which is, you know, really a community center. Built in 1886, Friendship Baptist Church outgrew the chapel, put up the property for sale, and moved to a new building just down the street. For years, it remained vacant. That is, until 2012, when an idea blossomed. These are cherry blossoms, right? These are cherry blossoms, and we are inside. Allowing it to transform into a space for the arts and culture community. Right now, we're on the balcony of what used to be a church, and to put things into perspective, take a look. This is where the congregation used to sit. Imagine some rows of pews, the pastor up front. It's now a very large space for activities. Even the piano has been fine-tuned into modern art. We caught up with Atlanta-based artist Alex Brewer, who spent nearly a month just painting the outside of 700 Delaware Avenue Southwest. Was it a challenge to paint something this large, a church? Yeah, because it was a three-dimensional uh, piece of architecture, uh, I wanted to kind of give it a sculptural feel uh, by wrapping the entire thing and by uh, continuing the patterns and the colors. There isn't an area that wasn't touched with paint or some type of creative content uh, or character. And that's, again, that, that's something that no other space can really offer. And that creativity attracts tourists inside to take a closer look. You're just visiting or? Oh yeah, okay, well get your, get your walk on. All right, please. For 131 years, people have been walking inside this church to pray, worship, and now can still appreciate creation. To be able to share that story of not just what we've done, but what the church congregation before us has done. Ben Kennedy, CBN News, 
Washington. And that's it for now on CBN Newswatch. You can find more of our exclusive coverage of the issues that you care most about at CBNNews.com. And tell us what you think about the stories that you've seen here. You can do that by emailing newswatch at CBN.com, or you can talk to us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We hope that you'll join us next time. Have a great day.